On October 1, 2025, something small but historic happened on the Atlantic coast of Portugal. A single 10-megawatt hydrogen electrolyzer arrived at the Port of Signs. It didn't make global headlines, but it quietly triggered the start of Europe's new energy era. That piece of equipment will form part of a 100-megawatt system designed to fuel refineries, power grids, and eventually ships with pure green hydrogen. And when it lights up in 2026, it will mark the moment Europe began producing its own transatlantic energy connection, one that stretches all the way to Canada. Because while China debates export controls and the U.S. wrestles with tariffs, Portugal and Canada are writing a different story, a clean energy alliance built on ports, pipelines, and quiet efficiency. In today's video, we unpack how Portugal just began Europe's transatlantic hydrogen revolution and why Canada is poised to become the next critical link. Welcome to Geocapitalist, where we decode global wealth through strategy, trade, and innovation. Every week, we follow how small decisions in energy, finance, or diplomacy reshape entire continents. If you enjoy fact-based storytelling that explains where the money and power are really moving, make sure to subscribe. Because the next global energy map is being redrawn right now, and you're about to see one of its first blueprints. Now let's begin. For decades, the Atlantic Ocean separated producers from consumers. But in 2025, it started to look more like an energy bridge, and Portugal became its anchor point. At the Port of Signs, Plug Power has just delivered the first of 10 electrolyzer modules for GALP's massive 100-megawatt green hydrogen facility. When fully operational, it will generate around 15,000 tons of renewable hydrogen per year, replacing about 20% of the gray hydrogen that currently powers the Signs refinery. That matters because refineries are Europe's dirtiest energy link, and replacing even a fraction with hydrogen cuts more than 110,000 tons of CO2 annually. The European Investment Bank has already committed over 430 million euros to the project. Local networks are being upgraded to handle hydrogen blending into gas lines. And the Atlantic Wind Corridor, the same that powers offshore turbines near Porto, will feed this plant with continuous renewable electricity. What makes signs different isn't size, it's direction. Unlike earlier hydrogen projects aimed inward at the EU market, signs looks outward toward the Atlantic. Its pipelines, terminals, and future shipping lanes point west, directly toward Canada's east coast. In essence, signs isn't just producing hydrogen, it's opening a new transatlantic corridor, a clean energy highway connecting European demand to North American supply. And while most nations talk about independence from fossil fuels, Portugal just built the first real hardware to make it happen. To understand why this matters, you have to see Europe's current energy stress test. Even in 2025, the continent remains vulnerable. Over 1,700 gigawatts of renewable power are waiting for grid connections. Projects finished, but unable to plug in due to network bottlenecks. The Netherlands now faces severe grid congestion, forcing over 14,000 companies to wait for electricity access. Data centers have delayed expansions. Car factories run at half output. The European Commission just announced an Energy Highways initiative, targeting eight major grid choke points across the block. But implementation will take years. Meanwhile, electricity prices remain volatile. Poland recently froze household energy tariffs at 500 zloty, approximately $137.56 per megawatt hour to contain inflation, a temporary fix that signals structural weakness. In simple terms, Europe's grid is overloaded and underbuilt. The continent generates enough clean energy on paper, but can't move it where it's needed most. That's why hydrogen, particularly imported hydrogen, has become the fallback solution. It can be stored, shipped, and burned or converted back into power when the grid fails. For Europe, hydrogen isn't hype. It's insurance. And the first molecule of that insurance will be minted in Signs, Portugal. 
When Europe's factories flicker and its voters demand stability, Brussels knows it can't wait another decade for new power lines. It needs partners who already produce, ship, and stabilize energy flows. That's where Canada enters the frame. While Europe wrestled with crises, Canada spent the last three years preparing. In 2022, Ottawa launched a 3.8 billion Canadian dollars critical minerals and hydrogen strategy, targeting exports of clean fuels by the late 2020s. By 2025, projects across Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, and Quebec were already producing pilot batches of green ammonia for export testing. Companies like Everwind Fuels and World Energy GH2 are building plants on Canada's eastern coast, directly facing Portugal's terminals. Together, they represent over 15 billion Canadian dollars in investment and an estimated 300,000 tons of annual hydrogen capacity once fully online. Canada's advantage isn't cost, it's credibility. Investors trust its political stability, environmental standards, and logistics transparency. European buyers know that contracts signed with Canadian suppliers won't evaporate with elections. Even more strategic, Canada already holds free trade access to the EU through CETA, the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, removing tariffs on most clean energy exports. That means every kilogram of hydrogen or ammonia sent from Halifax or Argentia arrives cheaper and faster than U.S. equivalents. As Europe seeks reliability, Ottawa offers precisely that. And with European companies like GALP, NG, and EDP expanding into Atlantic partnerships, Canadian supply fits seamlessly into their value chains. While the world debates who controls energy's future, Canada quietly positioned itself as the bridge between continents, a democratic exporter connecting European demand to North American production. No press conferences, no drama, just strategy in motion. Poland's energy struggle offers a warning for the entire European Union. In September 2025, Warsaw extended its electricity price freeze for the fourth quarter, capping rates to avoid public backlash ahead of winter. While politically popular, economists warn it masks a deeper crisis. Poland still relies on coal for nearly 60% of its power generation. Imports of Russian coal collapsed, and renewable projects face connection delays similar to those in the Netherlands. The result? A grid stretched thin and an industrial base increasingly uncompetitive. Yet there's a twist. Earlier this year, Canada and Poland signed a nuclear cooperation agreement, opening the door for both large reactors and small modular reactors, SMRs, a Canadian specialty. These compact systems can power cities or factories independently from overstressed national grids. Add hydrogen imports and technology transfers to that picture, and Poland suddenly represents an energy laboratory one where Canada's clean tech industry could test scalable solutions for Europe's heartland. The symbolism matters. When Warsaw, a traditional coal economy, signs nuclear and hydrogen deals with Ottawa, it signals a continental pivot away from old dependencies. And if Poland can stabilize its power prices with Canadian technology, expect neighboring countries, Czechia, Slovakia, even Hungary, to follow. Sometimes the story of global power doesn't start with superpowers. It begins with smaller nations solving urgent problems. In 2025, Poland may just become the unexpected case study in how Canada helps Europe stay warm, lit, and independent. The phrase Atlantic Corridor used to mean shipping lanes and fiber optic cables. Today it means something entirely new a bi-directional energy network linking Canada's clean fuels to Europe's industrial ports. At its core is Signs Portugal on one side and Argentia Newfoundland on the other. In between lies a digital and physical bridge, hydrogen tankers, ammonia carriers, and soon, subsea data and energy cables carrying not just information, but potential future electricity itself. This corridor reflects a quiet revolution in geopolitics. 
Instead of centralizing production in one region, nations are now distributing supply chains across stable democracies. Europe doesn't want dependency, it wants redundancy. And Canada fits perfectly into that model. Dependable, resource-rich, and geopolitically neutral. Economists estimate that by 2030, the transatlantic hydrogen trade could reach 10 billion euros annually, supporting over 20,000 skilled jobs in both regions. For comparison, that's roughly the scale of current transatlantic aviation trade, but cleaner, quieter, and far more strategic. The genius of this corridor lies in its subtlety. There are no military bases, no tariffs, no political speeches, just ports, pipelines, and progress. It's globalization reinvented, not through megacities, but through shared engineering. While the Pacific battles for dominance, the Atlantic is building resilience. And the partnership at its heart isn't between rivals. It's between Portugal and Canada. Here's what makes this alliance quietly powerful. It operates outside U.S. jurisdiction. Unlike oil or LNG, hydrogen and ammonia are traded under separate regulatory frameworks. That means American export controls and tariffs can't slow the transatlantic hydrogen flow. The infrastructure is financed through the European Investment Bank and Export Development Canada, not Wall Street. Data transfer between Signs and Halifax travels through EU NATO standard cables, but ownership remains European and Canadian. Even geopolitically, timing favors them. While Washington debates subsidies Ottawa signs long-term supply contracts immune to political whiplash, Portugal and Canada have built something Washington can't easily replicate. A green trade route that bypasses both the Gulf of Mexico and the U.S. East Coast choke points. That doesn't mean confrontation. It means autonomy. In a world of escalating tariffs, Building an ecosystem that functions without constant approval from a superpower is an achievement in itself. America still dominates LNG exports, but hydrogen, ammonia, and digital energy grids are different animals. Smaller, cleaner, faster to deploy. And for Europe's policymakers, that agility matters more than headline deals. As one analyst told Bloomberg Neff, the countries winning the energy transition aren't the loudest. They're the ones quietly securing infrastructure. That's precisely what Portugal and Canada are doing. And it's why, for the first time in a generation, the Atlantic trade story no longer runs through New York. It runs through signs. Step back, and the pattern is unmistakable. Europe's energy system is decentralizing, from pipelines that ran east-west to partnerships that now run north-south and across oceans. In this new map, Portugal isn't peripheral, it's pivotal. It's the landing pad for transatlantic hydrogen. Poland isn't backward, it's experimental, testing small reactors and grid independence. And Canada isn't distant, it's indispensable, the anchor of supply for both. The logic is pragmatic. Democracies trade better with each other when reliability becomes the ultimate resource. A molecule of Canadian hydrogen may cost more than a Chinese one, but it comes without geopolitical risk. For insurers, investors, and engineers, that stability is worth the premium. This partnership also marks the birth of a new industrial diplomacy. Instead of defense pacts, we're seeing energy pacts, shared infrastructure shaping long-term alignment. By 2030, Europe could source a quarter of its imported hydrogen from North America, with Canada leading. The Atlantic, once a divide, is quietly turning into an energy ecosystem. And the signal to markets is clear. When politics waver, physics and geography stay constant. Wind, water and trust still flow west to east. And those currents are now writing a different story one powered by electrolyzers, not pipelines. What began with a single 10-megawatt machine in Portugal is now shaping the future of transatlantic trade. The arrival of that first electrolyzer in signs wasn't just a delivery, it was a declaration. Europe is no longer waiting for energy security, it's building it. And standing beside it across the ocean is Canada, ready to supply, stabilize, and scale. 
In the end, this isn't a story about technology. It's about timing and trust. While others argue over dominance, Portugal and Canada are designing dependability, the kind that investors notice and policymakers quietly respect. By the end of this decade, ships may sail routinely from Newfoundland to signs carrying green hydrogen instead of oil. Cables may transmit not just data but energy credits. And the Atlantic, once a cold barrier, may become the warmest economic corridor on Earth. You've been watching Geocapitalist, where we follow the money shaping the next century. If this episode helped you see how a single port can shift the balance of power, I recommend you watching this video next. Subscribe and share so you don't miss the next chapter. This was how Portugal just began Europe's transatlantic hydrogen turn, and Canada is the next link. Thanks for watching. And remember, in geopolitics, power isn't just generated, it's connected. See you in the next video.